All right. Thank you, Mike. Okay, we are here to talk about how we deal with Class C offenses on CCSD property. Uh, the legislative session, last legislative session, they did a modification and they eliminated the ability for police officers to write citations. It is now illegal. We cannot do it. Citations. We can still take action, and I'm going to explain to you what we can do. So let's say a teacher comes to you and says that a student cussed them out, used profanity. What do we do? Well, we'll go through the flow chart. So we're on school property. We have a Class C offense disorderly conduct. 12-year-old kids, mostly in secondary campuses, Class C offense. If it's the first offense of the year, it's a criminal offense, but we can't write a ticket. We're going to write an offense report, and then we're going to refer it to the administration for a behavior contract. Then it comes down here. The state's the victim. The behavior contract is completed successfully. Good for Johnny. He gets no case, and he did what we wanted. We redirected him, and he learned his lesson. If he doesn't, then it comes over here. You guys come back to us with the behavior contract that says this behavior contract was not successfully completed. We file that, write another supplement report, and we take it to the courts. And the courts will summon them to court, and they'll have his day in court. So that's a basic overview of what the flow chart is. Now let me show you what it really looks like. First thing is, she comes and says, something happened, we're going to make a police report. The police report's going to have a narrative. This is a supplement because this was a behavior contract that was not successfully completed. So the officer who came on the second time did a supplement. And this is what the behavior contract looks like. So up here they put the student's name, some information, where they were, um, some kind of intervention goal, don't be involved in fights, student won't be targeted to class, won't receive office referrals, some kind of uh, redirection, and that is purely up to the administration. And then they say for a duration to last nine weeks. And that is also, that is an administrative function. We don't know how long you guys would, would do that. That's something that, that's on your side. Then they come down, they all sign it. This is the key part right here. If the person does not successfully complete it, the administration checks unsuccessful. The reason why, in this case, the kid came to school with a knife. So not only did he create in one offense, now he's got another offense. The case number, you give this to us, and we're going to put it together in a packet, and we're going to send it off to court. So let me see if I get this right. And I'm going to get it, Mike. Here we go. Blank behavior contracts, what it looks like. This one's a little out of scale to show the box. It's a little bit bigger. And our flow chart. When in doubt, go to the flow chart or give us a call. Uh, all the secondary campuses have police officers there. If you're not sure, you can talk to your police officer on the campus. If you're in the Carroll or Moody VLC, you can talk to Lieutenant Cano. If you're in the King, Ray, or Miller VLC, you can talk to Lieutenant Villarreal. Or you can just shoot me, a, uh, catch me on mock, or somehow get a hold of me. And we'll help you uh, with this process. The main thing to remember is, if it's a crime, get the police officer involved at the onset because then the behavior contract goes into play. We had an instance where a student was on a behavior contact, contract for a discipline issue, non-criminal, then created a crime and they wanted to use that behavior contract to, to enforce this criminal act and we can't do that. Start with a crime, behavior contract, additional uh, violation of the contract leads to prosecution. Um, I hope that's clear, and if we can give any questions, I have a question. To, okay, what you got? Okay, <clears throat> so Johnny cusses at the teacher. Yes. In the past, it, before this legislature, what could we do? We would write him a ticket. Okay. Well, now, we write, teacher statement, ticket, we file it. Okay. Now, because of this rule, Johnny cusses at a teacher in cusses at a teacher this semester, this six weeks. And I bring the officer, so I bring the officer in, they write the offense report, offense report. then Johnny has consequences at school, Correct. then Johnny, six, two weeks later, cusses at another teacher. 
secondary violation, if it's part of his behavior contract not to cuss teachers or follow school rules, and he does not, the administration at that point can say, Johnny, you failed your behavior contract, closes out the document, provides that back to the police officer, the police officer writes a supplement that says on above date and time, Johnny did not complete his behavior contract, we put that together in a package and it goes to court. Okay. So Johnny cusses at a student, he's on a behavior contract, then Johnny cusses at a teacher, he's not going to go to court, he's not going to have a ticket. Here's, it could be any criminal offense can start a behavior contract if the administration so chooses. So Johnny cusses at a teacher or Johnny um, is tardy, or, or not tardy, is truant, I meaning we catch him out wandering in the, in the park. We bring him back to school. Daytime curfew, that's the term I was looking for. He's daytime curfew. So now we say, uh, um, Dr. Torres, we caught Johnny out in the play and he said, Johnny, you're supposed to be at school. Johnny, you better be at school for the next five weeks. If you fail to be at school, you violate this behavior contract. So he's on the hook for a daytime curfew class C violation. Two weeks later, he cusses at Mrs. B. Mrs. B writes a referral. We take that, we put them both together, and we file a package. Okay. Johnny, Johnny brings a nine-inch knife to school. Johnny's going to jail. Okay. Doesn't affect this. Okay. Anything that was an arrestable offense, possession of marijuana, assault causing bodily injury, aggravated assault, controlled substance, uh, weapons violations, um, terroristic threat, all of that is a class B and above, has no effect on those. Uh, the legislature's intent on this was they're, they're believing that we're over-criminalizing uh, school behavior issues. And, uh, and so they wanted a, a way to redirect it before putting them in the criminal justice system. So they get kind of a, a, a not a free shot, but a, a redirection one time. Okay. And that's what it is. And then once they get that one, any, any vi violation thereof, could constitute a criminal offense. We just say he's already failed his behavior contract. Now, we don't write him tickets. We write an offense report and we paper file it. Okay, so, so, so Johnny cusses at a teacher and then two weeks, two weeks later, he's on, we do all the steps, and then two weeks later, he is late to class. But that wasn't part of his behavior contract. Here, here's the, the thing with the behavior contract, it's an administrative document. What I need from an administrator is them attesting that we put these rules in place and he didn't meet them. We don't ask what the rules are. We don't ask what the terms of the behavior contract are. That's a, a I guess, a, an agreement between the student and the administrator. What we need is the administrator saying he violated those terms and signing their name to it. Okay. Okay, and then if we have any questions? Come on, come on with them. Open book, just let me know. Who do I direct my question to? Um, well, ideally, you should just touch base with your campus officer. And if uh, the answer you get isn't quite as clear as you'd like, um, there's a lieutenant for each VLC, or for each uh, zone which services certain VLCs. Um, King, Ray, and Miller is Lieutenant Villarreal. Carol and Moody is Lieutenant Cano. Touch base with them, they'll give you the, the 411 on what's going on, or you can always call me. And uh, this is what all police on all the campuses this are This is the universal process. The, the, I think the hiccup that we've been finding is, is the implementation. Um, some schools are using it, some schools just aren't doing behavior contracts, and they're wondering why nothing's happening. Right. Um, and that's the, the behavior contract part, only for Class C's, is the sticking pin for us. And so, any help? that you guys can give us in getting it done. We want to be part of the team. But that, that document is required by law. It, it says in the provision that a, a court cannot accept a, a, a uh, offense report package from us without a document saying they tried, um, what is the word, graduated sanctions. And that's what that is.